Hey guys, this is uh, basically um, an extended cut of uh, building this uh, heavy truck into uh, really like a, a rusty, um, well, I guess it's a rusty heavy truck. Uh, basically, I just uploaded a, a shorter video and, uh, you know, I left out a lot of the great, uh, you know, the detailing that I had done. And I, you know, I had a number of, um, I had some feedback in terms of just how I, you know, what I did to uh, accomplish, um, you know, kind of putting this thing together, especially with the uh, the rust effect. And I do plan on doing like a separate, you know, tutorial, but I, I think there's enough content in here to kind of give you the right idea in terms of what I had done. So I'll do my best to, um, you know, put some commentary just in the right, the right places. But uh, this video is not um, uh, shortened by any means. It's, uh, you know, there, there's a few clips that I took out, but um, altogether, this is, a lot of the footage that I recorded, um, you know, for, for this build and, and, uh, you know, I figured I'd, I'd share it with you guys and then you can kind of get some ideas on, on your, your own, um, you know, projects that you're working on, uh, as well. So always happy to, uh, share. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I'm kind of exploring a lot of this stuff myself again. So, um, you know, a lot of it's new to me. I just like to try different things and, see how it turns out you know, you never know uh but anyways um yeah sit back and uh you know feel feel free to skim through the video as you see fit um again this is like the full build guide uh as to how i put this uh, truck together and uh it's meant to be i guess like a, a tutorial on how to do rust um and i actually did this one just a little differently than than my previous uh models uh so you know, a lot of experimentation to get uh, certain looks done. Um, and sometimes when you combine everything together, it looks, uh, it can uh, have some positive results. Yeah, so I like to keep things organized. It's just, um, you know, how you can uh, organize your stuff. You put things in baggies or, uh, you know, like in a big container. Um, you know, it just helps to keep all parts uh, together in case you somehow get started on, on a project and, uh, you know, fail to go back to it. Um, I have, a, you know, kind of a few on the go. I, I try to do, like, really stay focused and just do one at a time. But, um, you, know, uh, with the, you know, with this one in particular, you know, I figured I'd, I would just kind of work through it uh, during the week um, and, and just kind of get it all done. But uh, anyways, um, yeah, once I, I got it all disassembled and the paint stripped off, um, I took it in the garage and I took the uh, basically the Dremel to it and I kind of grinded out, um, you know, a lot of the rust areas that I that I knew was going to be or areas on the car that or the truck that's going to be, um, you know, rusted at the end. When I came back, I decided I really wanted to get a gun in the front of the car. Uh, I keep saying car, sorry. Uh, I wanted to have a gun sticking out the front of the truck. And um, so I had this empty uh, air cleaner um, from my other YouTube channel, which I do some uh, PC uh, related uh, uh, builds. And um, I thought I'm gonna reuse this uh, straw. I said, why, why throw it out when I can turn it into a gun? So, um, yeah, so this is sort of like a, a tutorial in a, within a tutorial on how to build a, a gun um, for your gas lance car um, or, or vehicle, um, you know, pretty quickly. So basically I just cut it and uh, mounted it inside with uh, hot glue. And then I moved over to putting some screening details on it. Um, I use the, uh, basically it's a drywall tape. And then I was scoping out, um, what kind of wheels because the ones that came sorry the wheels that were on it were kind of were kind of lame and I, I knew they wouldn't work for me so i decided to uh um you know use some for that tractor and then um i guess i deleted some of the clips but um this uh video is originally going to be titled uh, wtf like <laughs> what the fork um where i had actually took it took in sorry taken some um like fork the ends of forks and I basically cut them and um, I along with some uh, paper um, or actually I, I use like cardboard from like a picture frame 
to make um, spikes along with um, toothpicks as well. So, um, you know, it kind of combined all three, so they're different textures. And instead of just using hot or um, crazy glue, I used uh, hot glue to mount them on. It was I did them in stages, so you can each side it was done as a separate, um, you know, separate part because uh, the hot glue actually dries. Uh, it hardens pretty quickly, so you want to kind of go as fast as you can, you know, without them, um, you know, kind of falling off. But uh, yeah, the results uh, turned out pretty good. And then uh, basically, I. I um, uh, sprayed the like sprayed all the parts in uh, gray primer, just to kind of get uh, get a good uh, base going. Um, you know, after I had roughed up, basically I roughed roughed up the uh, the scavenger piece with my Dremel tool, just like I did the metal part as well. So I kind of gouged the plastic on that, um, and then once that everything was done, I masked off uh, the engine bay. Now the front engine of the truck, I actually really wanted to keep it removed. But because I put a gun on it, I couldn't like slide it in and out very easily. So I actually glued it in place. Um, and then I just taped it off and then I covered the entire model in uh, uh, brown primer. Um, the rear engine that came in the uh, scav or the scavenger piece, it, it, it was still removed. So I could just leave it separate and paint it separately, which is what I wanted to do. Um, and I like keeping engines sort of pretty clean. I didn't really put any dust, uh, dust effect on them. so. Anyways, I left them the way the way they were the way they ended up. Um, so this is the part of the key key part of the video it was how I actually came up with the uh, the milky uh, effect. And um, if you saw in the previous video, there's like a clip of a, a rusty uh, water cover. I guess it was out in the field somewhere. I saw it, and I've been noticing just you know past a week or two, like how you know you can see like a, almost like white or beige mixed in like around rust. I, I don't know really what causes that, but I, I'm gonna figure like, how am I gonna replicate that? So I figured if I do a base brown on the entire model um, and then come out with something kind of transparent, you can kind of see the, almost like the brown is starting to be um, like, a, like a rust effect and on its own. And I thought, well, and, and I did look at another um, Mad Max car with spikes on it. Um, online and basically um you know it it had like this white like right in the middle but not on the actual spikes itself so i thought it was kind of neat um you know i thought well I could, I could figure out a way to do that and what better way is uh you know using some kind of a wash to get the the color in there without really getting it on all the other parts so so i decided since it was uh you know nice outside um you know, I got my table uh, set up uh, on my on my deck, and uh, I thought, well, I'm gonna actually just work on painting this thing up. So um, again, yeah, this is like just how I started layering it on. I found that I actually use a little bit too much water, so you want to find the right um, mixture between the um, you know like the consistency of of the um, of the wash itself. I ended up like actually pouring a little bit out um, just to kind of um, make it like less runny. And then uh, where I found blobs, like there was actually a, cause I use white and sort of like this off white, um, like almost like eggnog kind of color. I mixed the two together. And uh, sometimes I had like little blobs of that browny uh, eggnoggy color. So I just, I actually just put it right on directly. I figured, it could have different tints in different areas and it would be would be fine um you know knowing that once i you know let it dry um it will end up uh you know looking looking the you know looking pretty good or pretty much you know to where i where i needed it to be So once I got the uh, the back uh, section done, or at least uh, you know a little bit done on it, I uh, I turned to the to the front and uh, like the the front main the main part of the of the truck itself, and um, this is where you know I started trying to get things a, a little thicker uh, in some areas, and even at this time I really didn't know like what the the actual original color of this thing was going to be. But I kind of knew that it was going to be somewhere in between this base color and 
and the rust. So I, <laughs> that makes any sense. Um, yeah, I just wanted something that showed like, a, I guess, a, a faded layer uh, between, I guess, the rust and whatever I decided uh, was going to be like sort of that, that middle color. Um, so just, you know, when you do this, you, know, you just kind of go all over it. Um, pull it in areas that you think are going to be um, maybe a less, uh, less rusty. And then the areas that are going to be a little bit more like darker, you can leave it a little less, um, I guess, uh, a little less, less heavy. So this back area being um, a little bit more flat, I just decided to like let it pool up um, and you know kind of do its own thing on the on the back of the uh, on the back of the truck itself. And uh, yeah, I mean with it being a little bit more runny, just let it kind of flow, um, you know, wherever it wants to go. And then uh, you can kind of do your own sort of effect with it with the end of the brush, just by um, you know moving the moving the water around really in the paint itself. The fact that I was actually outside, um, it did help to, uh, you know, keep it dry, uh, or sorry, dry a lot faster than um, trying to do this inside, but I guess it wouldn't really matter. Uh, for me, I was just taking advantage of some of the fresh air and uh, just kind of, um, you know, listening to, you know, all the noise around me. So hopefully you guys liked uh, hearing uh, I get basically my backyard <laughs> making a lot of noise. So uh, once the you know basically let everything dry, um, you know this is what I ended up with. Um, you know you can kind of see the you know the brown showing through the the you know through the the milk effect um, that I kind of kind of came up with, and um, you know it in itself it's already kind of looking a little rusty, but. Um, you know, it gives you a, it gives you something to to work on off of, work off of other than just like a like a base, um, you know, like a gray primer or something like that. So it's just something a little a little more interesting to to start off. Um, brought it back inside after it uh, dried fully, and uh, you know, as you can see, you know, there's a lot of faded um, areas, and you know, this is what I what I had hoped to. Um, have it turned out so um, you know definitely was achieving the achieving the goal that I was looking for um, and then uh, you know at this point I was trying to figure out okay well what I'm gonna do for uh, the next uh, you know the next phase which was basically trying to um, you know trying to come up with a, a base color and what my thinking behind this was um, you know old 50s like 1950s type of vehicles um, you know a lot of times they're like um, you know I would say funky colors, but uh, you know trucks always seem to be like blue or red or or green or something like that. So I figured, um, you know, plus uh, up to this point I had done a you know a few different colors in 
you know, I didn't really want to do like the uh, Constructicon um, green on this one. I, I was very tempted to use because um, I have like a big can of spray paint that I use for my uh, my Truckosaurus um, model where I, you know, kind of replicated the Constructicon team, um, you know, the, the color that uh, was on those toys. So um, anyways, I... At this point, I started to just detail uh, the engines. Um, you know, I hadn't really fully decided what color I was going to do, but I, th I thought I'd you know turn to actually um, you know working on the motors. And uh, what I did was kind of a combination. I wouldn't say dry brushing, but it's sort of a definitely not a lot of paint on my brush. I took like a, a like a little bit and uh, just evenly uh, put it all over the motor. And I, the uh, I guess the um, uh, what do you call it carburetors on the top i left uh you know the black in the hole there i just kind of painted over top of the the edge of the uh the, the 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 opening for the carburetors and then just left that uh, the black part as a recess and then i went over with um the same brush with sort of a dry brush kind of technique <laughs> it was it was kind of a wet brush but not really i just let it sort of glide over top of the bumps um, a little bit and just leaving um, just that little bit of black um, showing through on um, on the uh, the metal pieces. Um, this uh, black paint, um, I was a little disappointed when I bought it. I actually thought it was a flat uh, black or, or more of a semi-gloss, but it turned out to be a little bit more glossy than I normally like. So not a big deal, but um, I think if it's a flat paint or a little bit less shiny it, it helps to have other things uh stick to it a, a little bit better at least in my opinion but um anyways it just just kind of painting it this way um you know just kind of makes it makes it easier uh you know for you just go gliding the pro uh, the brush along the uh all the bumps Yeah, and then just uh, moving on to the front uh, motor, um, this uh, this engine was just uh, massive when uh, for for the type of vehicle this thing is. But I figured it would look awesome, um, you know, for for a gas lens car. Actually, I mean the whole model too. Um, I kind of based it off like a almost like a rat rod meets uh, gas lens. So I mean, if you look at a lot of gas or uh, rat rod. Um, trucks and cars you know quite often they're pretty you know they're supposed to be kind of rusty but then you have these like nice looking um engines and tires and you know um so i was kind of going for that look i mean mind you the uh the tires that i ended up putting on this um on this truck uh, i ended up kind of painting them and detailing them uh you know to almost match the model but i almost left them like brand new um but I thought, you know, it might might look a little odd. So I, I did actually go ahead and, and, and paint those up. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, at this stage, I figured I'd start to uh, to actually detail out the engine. I didn't paint, paint the radiator at, at all. It was sort of that semi-gloss uh, uh, look that most radiators are. So I, I kind of left it, um, you know, painted black. And then um, I started doing, putting a little bit of metallic on the uh on the windows like the uh i guess the uh the barb um we call it the grate on the side here because it's supposed to be rusty but you know sometimes you'll see a bit of metal shining through and i figured you know it's supposed to be a little bit of wear on it so it's not gonna be really going to be um you know completely rusted and then yeah just finishing up all the metal bits i did this is actually more of a dry brush it's just really going over all the uh, raised areas. Um, retrospect, I probably could have actually done a little bit of more like a rust on on uh, on the front of this because it was it actually already had a, I guess from like whoever owned this uh, truck before me um, damaged the front of it. So that that little nick that was on the on the uh, the front grill was actually already there when I got it. So I just kind of thought, well, that's just adds character to it and um, yeah, it was, it was looking looking pretty good, and this is like how uh, how that ended up uh, looking. Then I uh, started taking 
well, since I had the metal out, I started to highlight at this point, I really didn't know what I was going to do in terms of the color again for the rust. And I, I hadn't really um, anticipated it was going to end up um, at this stage the, the way it did. So I was thinking, you know, with doors, there's a lot of wear, um, you know, people that are opening and closing, I figured it wouldn't be, wouldn't have the paint on them anymore. Like it would be, um, you know, more or less metal. So I kind of started to highlight uh, some of the doors and just I mean, even like dry brush a little bit on the raised areas. And then, uh, so this is like the main part where, um, how I started doing the uh, the rust effect. And, uh, I guess the whole thing is really a rust effect with the, between the milk and the, and the paint. Um, but what I did was I just took uh, one of the sponges um, uh, that I had and basically, and don't tell my wife, <laughs> I took, the, basically there's a, one of these dollar store sponges. I mean, really it's not like nothing. So I just had one of these sponges that, um, that I had and I thought, well, why don't I just try put like uh, some random, like a light color. So I picked this blue, I thought it was kind of like, I'm gonna say like an annoying uh, blue color. And, uh, you know, I figure, well, old cars from the 50s, um, you know, again, would be um, like blue or green or, you know, something kind of funny, uh, some kind of, something kind of fun in terms of uh, coloration. So I thought, well, why don't I just see what it would look like on, um, on the truck itself. So if you start doing sponges like I had done, um, you use one corner of it, but then if you put too much on, you can always turn, turn the sponge and just like cake off, like uh, pat away some of the paint as well. Like if you put too much, you can have, um, always can it take it off. Don't do any, like don't do a rub, like don't rub it. I, I did that one time and really all you're gonna do is um, make it look like a paint rub. So just really dab it with the sponge itself and then just kind of go around you know, kind of uh, lightly um, and then just add uh, a little bit more as, as you go. Because um, you might find that you put too much paint in one area and then, uh, you know, and then it will start uh, looking more like a, like a painted vehicle versus like a, like a rusty car. Yeah, so I, you know, just kept adding, um, you know, more blue over time, and it got the got the front the the way the way I thought it would be, and I use yeah I use my fingers from time to time to uh, you know kind of remove a little a little bit of the paint off. Um, I was also thinking about actually changing the color of like uh, one of the doors, like the uh, the driver's side door. I thought, you know, maybe I'll make it like a, a completely different color. Um, but then I just thought, you know, it's just a lot of extra work and, you know, might, it might mess up, uh, you know, the model. And then for the back, I uh, decided that, you know, I wanted to show a little bit more of the blue. So um, a little less wear than, than the front. I figured if you're driving, truck is driving, um, more paint is being removed. So with the back, I thought, well, um, you know, the tops should be pretty clean, especially with the, uh, the top section kind of being above it. Um, be a little less uh, wear and tear uh, on those spots. So I thought, well, I'll put, I'll put more blue on it and then, um, you know, see, see how it turns out. I wasn't really, um, I'll be honest, I, I didn't really quite like the blue at this point. So I was thinking, I don't know, man, I'm not sure if I kind of like what I did. I, you know, maybe, maybe it'll look a little funny with the uh, sort of the yellow milky color, but um, this is where I started thinking, okay, how do I make this more rusty? And then again, referring to pictures and just things I saw out, outside, um, I noticed that a lot of, there's always like an orange, um, you know, in the, in the brown, like with the rust itself. So I had this, uh, in my paint set, basically I had this like orangey color and uh, I started just kind of using the same techniques um, that I did with the blue again with the uh the sponge and i i had cleaned the sponge completely in between so um it should be uh pretty um you know pretty much like no, no more blue inside it
So with the orangey, I just went around the whole uh, vehicle, just applying this like, um, um, you know, orangey uh, rust color. I mean, I thought it was uh, kind of neat as a as a base for for like a rust rust effect. And it, this is literally uh, what I what I did to kind of achieve like help achieve the uh, the end result. And uh, you, what you want is just just kind of pat it down um, nicely. Again, like don't rub it. Um, just keep going back and adding more as you need. Um, you're almost going to be, it's almost like a dry, dry sponge. Um, so not a lot of paint sometimes. Like if you want something that's like this effect here where it's not splotched up, but it's just very um, subtle. I use like a, the sponge was kind of dry at this point, but it still had some paint on it. And then um, after that, I, uh, I basically decided to... Uh, add some other colors to it. Um, I found, um, you know, I had like a, like a, like a red, um, I call it like a, like a red oxide, uh, color. And uh, at first I was going to use Brown, but then I don't know, the red was seen to be a transition between the two. So I, so I used that as, as well. Um, which you'll, you'll see in a second, but I, uh, you know, I continue on with the orange, um, on both pieces of, of the, uh, of the truck and uh, again, following the same techniques. So yeah, so once those two uh, parts were done, I moved on to this uh, red color. Um, and then I also grabbed this uh, brown that I had been using. Um, it's called burnt, uh, burnt Amber. And um, yeah, I, I decided to try this red. At first I was thinking, I don't know, I wasn't sure if it's gonna work, but then just as I was using it, um, it proved to be like sort of that, that natural highlight between the, uh, the orange and, um, you know, again, you don't wanna, I, don't, I wasn't trying to cake it on, so it would t literally take over the, the orange, like you wouldn't see the orange anymore, I just kind of, kind of dabbed it on in, in certain areas and um, just kind of kept going. And I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty neat, like for certain areas that I wanted to have um, more like a, like a darker rust, I kind of I kept dabbing it a little, a little bit more than uh, some of the other areas. And then the, the milk, that milky effect was sort of the, um, I guess, how do I explain it? the liquid or the continuous rusting of this vehicle over time just bleeding away from um, the rest of the rust. So it's, if you just imagine like the dark going to the lighter as, as it's, um, you know, I guess going away from the vehicle and pouring down the side. So I just using the rust, sorry, the red color in, uh, in those areas. And as you can see by my, my sponge, it literally looks, uh, you know, like rust that you want to stay away from. So then I also, at the end, I, I started um, using the brown and kind of went over those same two areas that I did with the orange and the, and the red. And then um, I took my metal, basically my metal paint that I've been using and started just going over the, uh, the back spikes. Um, because a lot of them were uh, still kind of milky and not looking like metal at all. And I, I wanted them to be a little bit more uh, shiny than the rest of it, um, at least looking like metal shards. And then I would rust them out um, like I did with the rest of the car like uh, or the truck afterwards. But um, yeah, this is where I started to just, um, you know, detail some more of the metal areas with um, with that uh, metal paint that I use. So this is where I started to actually dry brush. Um, and I kind of, this is one of the reasons why I reposted this video was I actually did some dry brushing on like the edges of where it was like super rusty, like really, um, like really dark. Um, sometimes I've noticed like 
where a bolt, like a nut or a bolt is really rusty, but had been say moved at some point or something rubbed over it. It's always shiny. So I thought, well, if you just take a, um, take a brush and you do the dry brush on the edges, like where, where you've made things like really dark, um, you can actually uh, make it look like it's been worn like a little bit, like some of the metal is still kind of shining through and it looks pretty cool at the end. Um, this, this is where I started to try to find out how to do, um, you know, just some staining. I actually had this uh, more crimson red uh, wash and I just wanted to see how it would look. So I started to paint it in this, uh, in the truck bed here uh, where you wouldn't see the end result. And I figured if I paint it there and it didn't look good, um, you know, nobody would ever know. So, um, yeah, I didn't really like it. So I switched back to just using my, uh, my brown, um, wash that I, that I put on, usually put on like shiny parts and, uh, just kind of started going over some of the milky areas with, um, with this just to kind of get that outline going, um, and just darken things up a bit. So once I got um, those steps uh, finished, I moved over to, uh, this is like a dry pastel. This is a dry pastel that you can mix with um, basically uh, um, alcohol. It's a, the same, it's actually an alcohol that I use in my, uh, on my, on my PC build uh, channel. Uh, basically I use the same alcohol to remove the thermal paste from, um, uh, computer components and um, it also doubles as my wash uh, or my um, I guess the liquid that I use for my for my hobby <laughs> making videos so uh, the idea behind this is to use a dry pastel you grind it up with um, basically I just shave it off with an exacto knife and then when you mix it with uh, the alcohol it uh, turns into like this uh, paste or uh, like a wash and uh, I use it on the uh, the the bottom of the uh, the whole truck uh, this is the chassis um, when it dries, it, it basically looks like rusted metal all by itself. Um, I decided to do that a little differently than, than the rest of the vehicle. Um, but I, you know, I used it on, um, the back area, like where I was doing all the metal, uh, the metal parts, um, you know, where areas where I couldn't really reach with like a sponge or anything like that. I was going to use, use the, uh, the wash, um, on this area back here. I accidentally touched um, that door. I, would, I didn't really want to have it on there, but it was fine. I mean, I could I could have kept going with that, but uh, again, I didn't really want to kind of do what I anything I had done previously on some other cars. So I moved over to uh, um, this piece here, and basically off camera, I uh, I had to uh, paint. I uh, use spray paint to um, kind of cover off uh, this, um, I don't know what you call these things, I guess they're like service panels on the truck. So I painted them um, off white and then I started to detail them with this, uh, one of my paint markers that, uh, that I had and just to kind of, you know, paint in some like, um, some of the buttons. I don't really know what you call these things, but I just, I figured they'd, they'd have to be a certain color. Um, and then I thought, well, red would be, um, but red would be appropriate. So I use that uh, on the side panel and then I also use it on um, the rear lights for the, for the truck itself. So I uh, also didn't uh, really record it, but um, I glued the, uh, the wheels on um, from, those, uh, from the tractor that I showed you guys earlier. I actually ended up buying two of them and uh, I didn't like the original wheels, I just looked they look kind of lame for this car, so for this truck. So I, I kind of had to change them, and I really liked um, the ones that came on this. Um, like basically, it was a Matchbox uh, tractor, and uh, they were basically the same size, but the um, the axles themselves were just not wide enough. So I had to cut them and then glue them in place. Um, you know, just to kind of. So this thing doesn't roll which is unfortunate, but uh, I, I always like, I kind of actually like them uh, to be rollers if, if at all possible, but it was just going to be a lot of work uh, to, to get them to fit. And um, I really didn't, I really didn't feel like spending another day trying to get it on there the way I, the way I thought they would be. So I just quickly use this, um, uh, basically it's a makeup brush 
to uh, dry brush um, like a, a, a light beige uh, as a as a dirt uh, base for everything and just kind of I didn't want to do a lot of dry brushing because I didn't want that to take over the uh, the rusting effect that was on it so sometimes if you do too much dry brush it, that's all you really see is is the dry brushing going on but I kind of just use this sparingly where where I thought it would be good on the tires and just basically the front So yeah, once all this uh, final dusting was done, um, just to kind of blend a little bit of the of the front together with the rust and the dust. <laughs> um, yeah, again, this was like the final result um, as in the, the previous video, like the, the more shorter edition of this. But um, yeah, I wanted to share just kind of like exactly what I had done, um, you know, to put this thing together. And, uh, you know, hopefully, um, this is the first video that you've seen before the other, the other, the, I guess the prequel to this, um, you know, hopefully you, you like the video and, um, you know, if you're not a subscriber, feel free to, uh, subscribe to the channel. And, um, you know, if you have any suggestions for, uh, future bills, uh, please let me know. Um, you know, if you'd like to see like a sports car done, um, with this kind of effect, you know, just let me know, or I'm going to try to do something with like some different colors and see how it, uh, how it turns out uh, in the end, but um, you know, hopefully you guys uh, like uh, like this uh, overall design, and um, yeah, I hope you're hopefully you're having a great day, and uh, thank you for uh, stopping by.